So transaction number 10 on the 16th, we received cash on account from Main Street Services, $200. Received cash, the first two words, they, that tells me the account is cash. Cash is an asset. It is going up because I received it. So it is going up $200. I received cash on account. Those are the next keywords, on account from Main Street Services. So that tells me accounts receivable. When I see on account, it's either receivable or payable. So it's receivable, Main Street Services, and it is going down because I was supposed to get 500 bucks from them. They're giving me some of it now. So the amount that I'm going to be left with it to be received is going to be reduced. So I got $200, so it's a negative 200. A plus and a minus when it's on the same side of the equal sign also is a way to know. So nothing happened to supplies, nothing happened to prepaid insurance, nothing happened to payables, and the owner had nothing to do with it and we didn't have revenue and expense. So the rest of this is not affected. Then I'm going to compute my balance like I always do. And these are my new balances. And then the last thing I always check is to make sure left side equals right side. So the right side is still 3,240. And the left side is also 3,240. So then the last transaction that I'm going to do is on the 16th as well. And it says that Michael Delgado withdrew equity in the form of cash, which was $350. So $350 withdrew cash or equity. So I know that cash is affected. I see the words cash. So cash is withdrawn from the business. It left the business. So it's an asset and it's going down. I see nothing about on account. I see nothing about supplies. I see nothing about prepaid insurance. So that tells me these four accounts aren't impacted. And it tells me that it has to be capital then. And I knew they withdrew for personal use, so that is a withdrawal. Withdrawals are bad, so it makes capital go down. And again, the classification of capital was owner's equity. So then the last thing that I'm going to do is compute the new balances. I've done that here. You could copy those and then make sure that the right side equals the left side. So the right side is 2890, and the left side has to be the same, and they equal. I make sure my accounting equation is still working. So that is all the transactions that I needed to do. There's 11 of them. Again, you are going to do these transactions over and over and over again. They're every type of transaction you can have. They'll use different words. They'll try to confuse you with a lot of words. But at the end of the day, these are the 11 that you're going to continually do and we will start to build upon. They are our alphabet. And just as a reminder, whenever I'm on a balance line, these red lines, I don't have plus minuses. When I'm on a transaction line, the one, two, threes, I have plus minuses and I only use the accounts that are affected when I'm doing transactions. And then my last reminder is whenever you're doing capital, you need to say if it's affected, whether it is revenue, expense, withdrawal, or investment. And because we did not know that concept yet at this point, we will switch it to say investment and I will enter that so that we have it.
so we have to specify that whenever we do. The final thing that I want you to get in your notes is you already had all of this. What you didn't have is as it related to revenue. And I put it on the wrong line, so I'm going to just cut that real quick. Cut. So there is something, and this is on the revenue line again, realization of revenue concept. That means that revenue is recorded at the time goods or services are sold. So you might see that on a quiz or a test. So realization of revenue concept is a gap requirement, and it's saying that when I sell something, I record it at that time. So it does not matter if I receive cash right away or if it's going to be later, if I sold it and the rights to those goods or services passed to someone else legally, I need to record the sell at that point. So that was the final concept in this chapter. So just as a review real quickly for chapter one, the entire chapter, the things that really matter to us. It matters to me that, you know, accounting is the language of business, and it is planning and recording and analyzing uh, information and interpreting it. Then I care that you know that that's recorded in financial statements that are used by stakeholders. And then I care that you know the accounting equation more than anything in the whole wide world. I care that you know that assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. You have to know that and be able to define what each of those components are. And then we know that this equation has to stay in balance no matter what transactions affect it. And we learned how to look at the effect on these things of different transactions and ultimately the left side has to equal the right side. So that was kind of our big concepts for the chapter. We learned how to define some things, we learned a lot of different definitions, and we learned some concepts. We learned unit of measurement, that it's all in dollars so we can compare things, or all in euros so we can compare things. We learned business entity, that I got to keep the business transaction separate from the owner. And we learned this realization of revenue that we have to record the sale of goods or services when it happens, no matter if we got the cash or not at that time. Next, we are going to do the work together problem for the section, and then we'll go from there.